My name is Diana, and this summer I worked on geodesy data for education at UNASCO with focus areas in water resources, sorry about that, volcanic hazards, uh, flooding, and teaching with Google Earth. So the project that all of this is centered around is the Geodesy Tools for Societal Issues project, referred to as Getsy. And the goal of this is to bring geodesy data into the undergraduate curriculum. These data are available and they're used currently for all kinds of issues that affect society, like climate change, flood hazards, water resources, earthquakes, and many others. But there are some barriers in application in the classroom in that uh, these data sets could be time consuming for instructors to find the right one for their goal and to clean and to write instructions. Um, and the Getsy project bridges that gap by providing open access curriculum, which includes everything that instructors would need for a successful lesson, such as ready-made data sets, instructions, assessments, and presentations. So that's where the internship work comes in. Uh, this summer I had the pleasure to work with instructors from various colleges and universities, six to be exact, on three Getsy modules, flood hazards, water resources, and volcanic hazards. So the first module that I'll, oh, I'm so sorry that it just skipped. first module that I'll talk about is the flood hazards module. And here, some of the goals start with students downloading uh, flood maps from FEMA. And so for that, my task was to write instructions and for them to uh, download water data from the USGS. So the uh, water data would tell them about velocity of stream flow. And another task was for students to use a common hydrologic modeling software, the Hydrologic Engineering Center's River Analysis System, or HEC-RAS for short. And so here on the left side of the slide, we could see a digital elevation model derived from LIDAR of, the Boise, of a reach of the Boise River in Idaho. The blue line going through there is a reach of the Boise River itself that is being analyzed, whereas the green lines that cross that river are cross sections that were surveyed by the USGS using a um, an electronic total station. On the right side of the slide, we can see a cross section, one of the, the one that's, that's being pointed to, and that is survey data combined with LIDAR so that we could get uh, an accurate reconstruction of the channel geometry. And so here is an example of this HECRAS model being run. So my task was to write instructions for this and to prepare the data. Um, and what this can tell us is the extent of in flood inundation for a specific flow rate, in this case, 5,000 cubic feet per second. And on the right side, we can see a cross section that shows us the flow depth, the water flow depth. The next module I worked on was a water resources module. This um, the, has a goal of combining three data sets to get students to measure water availability. So this includes GRACE, the gravity and climate experiment, a vertical component of GPS from UNAPCO's Plate Boundary Observatory, and groundwater data from USGS. And here are just a few examples of some maps that of the GRACE data that uh, I've prepared for the students. The blue colors um, are corresponding to lower total water storage, so I mean higher total water storage, so increasing water availability, whereas the red colors are decreasing water availability. And so these are, were prepared for three different months um, and formatted into a user-friendly format for students and instructors, as well as uh, detailed instructions for all, for all of this to be able to be replicated and to be put into Google Earth, which would be um, more accessible. Um, water data from the U uh, USGS groundwater data set, as well as uh, GPS vertical data were combined with GRACE, and here are a couple of examples of these graphs that were prepared for students to analyze. The orange line is the GRACE data, that's total water storage in millimeters seen on the axis on the right side. On the left side of, the of both of the graphs are GPS and vertical motion and depth to water table respectively, so this is another tool students can use to analyze water availability. Lastly, uh, as far as the Getsy modules go, I worked on the volcanic hazards module for um, 
undergraduate courses and there, students look at Yellowstone, Mount St. Helens, and Kilauea. But I'll mostly be talking for the interest of time about Yellowstone and Mount St. Helens here. Um, so my, my task was to prepare graphs of GPS data as well as to compute distance between GPS stations. So we can see here a distance between stations OFW2 and WLWY and how that changes over time. So this could be a, a useful tool for students to examine how that system is changing and a, a map showing the vectors of motion. Um, students will also look at earthquake data. And so my task was to prepare graphs for four decades starting from 1980. This is just an example of the most recent, which shows earthquake data. Um, and also an animation was prepared uh, for Mount, this one is for Mount St. Helens, showing digital elevation model on the left side and imagery from Landsat on the right side to show how this system is changing through time. To give some background, in 2004, uh, magma actually reached the surface and there was an eruption in 2005 that was accompanied with earthquakes and so this uh, digital elevation I'll, I'll just skip forward can show us how this system is changing through time lastly I worked on the teaching with Google Earth web page so that is now updated to match reality uh, and to be more current and added um, more uh, new features that Google has has included such as Earth Engine which allows the public to uh, do complex geoprocessing tasks all free and open source and on the right side is a picture of myself with my new acquaintances I met at the Earth Educators Rendezvous in Kansas which was an excellent experience and I'm very thankful for where I got to meet people I got to network and um, work on my teaching and research statement and um, Enjoy a wonderful workshop from um, Beth. So thank you so much to my mentor here from afar, my, I guess, mentors, uh, Beth Pratsatala and Donna, um, Aisha for organizing everything, and Melissa and Kelsey, um, and all the module authors that I worked with who uh, communicated with me, which I very much appreciate, and um, all the interns and everyone else at UNASCO for their help and um, yeah, thank you.